thank you everyone for attending this webinar uh jointly hosted by uh kevin uh from equinix and manny from prosimo uh this is to share some work we've been doing together and a very exciting announcement on uh how to best deploy applications across a hybrid environment using equinix and prosimo together i'm going to hand over to uh, my guests here to introduce themselves and then they're going to give a bit of a run through of some uh, top use cases for our various platforms just for anyone who is unfamiliar with our respective companies and then we'll get into um, some live Q&A and some questions around the partnership who it's for what it delivers and uh, just how amazing it is so yeah let's start off Kevin uh, please introduce yourself to our audience and um, tell us uh, a little bit about yourself, and then we'll jump over to Manny. Sure. Thank, thanks, Nathan. I appreciate the invite to the, to the seminar here. So my name is Kevin Scahill, and I've got about 20 years of product experience uh, in networking, security, and cloud. Um, so really, really happy to be here. Thank you for the invite. Awesome. Thanks, and Manny. Hi, everyone. Uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, Manny Ganesan, run uh, products for uh, Prosimo. Super excited to talk about uh, what we're up to uh, with Equinix here. Fantastic. Now, Kevin, I think you were going to take it away with some just uh, the top use cases, what people are using Equinix for and the value they're getting from the platform. Um, Manny, I think you're screen sharing. Are you going to advance the slides or are we going to switch over here? Yeah, no, I can advance the slide. Uh, okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's just stay on the slide for a second. I mean, um, so, um, you know, I think that uh, th this partnership is like peanut butter and chocolate, right? They're, they're both uh, fantastic by themselves, but they taste even better together, right? And so uh, I hope through the, the process of, of, you know, our, our little talk here that that will become apparent. Um, so, you know, in, in, in this partnership, um, you know, really Equinix, the Network Edge and the Equinix Fabric serve as the underlay over which Prosimo delivers its its services and its value, right? And so I think they're highly complementary in that fashion. Um, and so again, hopefully that comes out. Um, and and I'll, I'll start by describing just how Equinix is, is kind of so critical to that network underlay. So if you can maybe advance the slide here and we'll, we'll stay on this one for a little bit and I promise it won't stay on it forever, but uh, it might, uh, well, the, the bulk of the conversation will probably be on this one. So, you know, like traditionally, um, large organizations have deployed their applications in highly centralized data centers. And so just about all traffic, no matter where it's originating, uh, was kind of trombone through those, those central locations. Um, of course, it didn't exactly create the best user experience. Uh, but, it, but as organizations start, start to, to, to migrate to the cloud and move, move workloads to the cloud, you know, it turns out the cloud isn't one one place, right? And it's easy to think like, hey, moving to the cloud, it's, it's one place. But of course, you know, we all know it's it's US West, it's US East, it's Asia Pac, North, South, East, West, same in same in EMEA, right? And, and so as, as organizations are moving those workloads to the cloud, they, they start to realize that they need to optimize for multi-cloud networking, frankly, because oftentimes they're not moving to just one cloud, but they're moving to multiple clouds in multiple locations. And so they need to establish networking in each one of those locations. Because you don't, again, want to have this the, the bad experience of a centralized data center. You want to trombone everything back to one location to uh, you know, um, be able to do networking and security and everything else between, between those clouds. And um, you know, th that's where uh, you know, Aquinix has really come in to help provide this underlay. Wherever a customer needs to have a cloud presence, frankly, wherever their users are, whether those users are, you know, customers, employees, or partners, um, you know, we're, we're, we're able to typically provide that that type of presence because Equinix has 250 data centers uh, in 65 metropolitan locations throughout the world. And so we also have a software-defined network called Equinix Fabric that not only connects these different uh, locations, but also connects to uh, the clouds, to service providers, you know, network service providers, SaaS providers, um, and uh, so you know, it, it it just really allows the the connection, you know, to, to those providers, but also to frankly to any business that wants to transact with other businesses. And increasingly, other partners have come onto the fabric and provided their service, uh, you know, over private interconnection. 
So traditionally, organizations would come to Equinix and, and rent a uh, rent co-location, and, and many still do. It's a thriving business for us. But customers also have a choice now to deploy digital, right? So we, we've got digital services in Network Edge, in Fabric, in Metal, right? And so um, you know you've got a choice, you know. Rather than, you know, of course you can run a cabinet in occasion. Again, many still do, but involved in that is like, okay, we got to ship, acquire the gear, ship the gear, rack, stack it, configure it, maintain it, et cetera, um, even before you are able to turn up service. But with a digital service in a matter of a few clicks, or if you prefer APIs, uh, with a matter of a few API calls, you're able to stand up infrastructure. And so Network Edge is virtualized infrastructure. Uh, that allows you to deploy a curated set of VNFs that are part of our Network Edge marketplace, which we're really proud to have uh, across the moment join here. Um, and so that leads, and yeah, so we can move on to the next next slide here, which leads into you know how, how we then use Network Edge and Fabric and um, to 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 address some of those use cases that I just mentioned. And so the first use case there on the, on the upper left, right, is just really networking between the clouds. As I mentioned, you know, the fabric is connected to, to, to the clouds. Um, and it's not just over the internet, it's over private interconnection. It's using direct connect, direct connect express route, Google Cloud Interconnect, Oracle Cloud Interconnect, et cetera, right? Um, which both reduce your data egress charges, provides for better SLAs, higher performance, low latency. And so if you need to route between the clouds, then uh, what better place to do that than the network edge, particularly when you want to use private interconnection over those, those constructs. Um, so that's the upper left. On the upper right, it's just kind of extending that use case to hybrid multi-cloud. So you still may have workloads that are either in your on-prem in, in, in your data center or frankly in one of our cabinets or cages that maybe it's some workloads that you uh, aren't optimized for the cloud. Uh, maybe as you're lifting and shifting, you decide it's not worth the effort. These make more sense to to be on our own servers, um, or increasingly with metal servers, right? At, here at, at, at Equinix, um, whatever the reason be, regulatory reasons, state privacy reasons, that they're not well suited to the cloud. So you've got those in some other location. Um, and so again, you can route not just to the cloud, but you can connect back to your infrastructure wherever it may be. And of course, customers can come in if you've got, you know, a point of sale uh, infrastructure in that uh, private cloud. They're sitting in Stockholm in that example. Customers can also come in, and that's kind of shown on the bottom left, which is like an SD WAN use case. You may have, you know, many branches. For example, in let's let's give the example of of New York, right? You may have tons of different branch. Uh, branches, maybe the retail branches in um, in Manhattan, and you want to make sure that your customers, employees, partners have a great experience on wrapping and getting to the clouds, not just the CSPs, but maybe also, for example, to the Zoom session, right? Zoom is available on the fabric uh, over private interconnection, right? To make sure that it's a high performance, low latency um, experience. Um, so that's the lower left. And then on the lower right is just building resilient architectures um, as larger organizations have critical parts of their business running over the network. They want to make sure that there are multiple paths um, in case of um, you know outages in any any part of the network due to natural disaster or otherwise. And so there's the you know kind of the top use cases where we're seeing uh, network edge being used for customers who are looking to deploy an interconnection oriented architecture and who are looking uh, to optimize their hybrid multi-cloud networking. So on the next slide, we just see that, you know, um, what, what Network Edge is all about. It's easy to use, simply, you just simply select one of the virtual network devices. Um, so in this case, the Prosmo connector, uh, but you may also be using that in connection, conjunction with SD-WAN as an example. Um, and then you deploy in one of the locations uh, that we're in. Uh, Network Edge is in one of our 32 uh, metropolitan locations, I, I will soon be 32, will be in Seoul here at the end of September. Uh, so that'll be that'll just 32. And again, it gives you proximity to all those connections that are available on the cloud. And then you simply connect via the software defined network in a matter of seconds to uh, all those connections of choice. Um, so the virtualized infrastructure provides anywhere from two to 16 quarters, depending on, again, the curated set of, of uh, devices that are on the marketplace. They're already 
um, it's already specified which cores work best with which uh, with which device there. Um, and we've got a number of different uh, device types uh, on there. And it's essentially available. You can use it as little as a day, but we find that most customers uh, stand up their networks and, and, and keep them up for uh, periods of time. And so they take advantage of oftentimes of the 12, 24, 36 month terms. Um, and I think I got one more slide here, uh, which just again, you know, uh, calls out uh, that on the fabric, um, you know, th there's so many destinations on the, on, on the fabric. Of course, there is the, the cloud service providers and, and infrastructure as a service providers. There are our network service providers, which frankly were probably the first ones, um, you know, on, on, on the fabric. And then um, we've also increasingly added other types of providers, collaboration. I mentioned Zoom, WebEx is another, Ring Central, et cetera. Uh, SaaS providers, again, that want to uh, make it easy uh, for in, in secure and reliable for customers to connect back to their services over private interconnection and increasingly security as well. So Cloudflare uh, and Perv Akamai, um, also Umbrella from Cisco, F5 and Micron here. So there's over 2,400 destinations. And when, I, when you as a customer come onto the fabric, you have the, uh, the, the, the opportunity to uh, allow other um, companies to connect to you, business partners, for example, or customers to connect to you over the fabric if you so choose. So if you choose to be a destination, uh, you can do that. You need to create a public service profile if you want anybody to be able to find you on uh, on the fabric and connect to you that way, or you can have a private service profile which you um, only authorize certain partners, for example, to connect to you directly. So that's the value of, of Network uh, Edge, Fabric, uh, Metal, our digital services, platform Equinix, in terms of being able to create this interconnection-oriented architecture and provide that un underlay to the, um, uh, you know, the higher level services that, uh, that um, Pro Prosimo and others uh, provide and that, that Manny will uh, um, explain next. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Uh, that was a, a great overview for uh, Equinix Network Edge. You know, um, it's a marketing cliche to talk about, uh, hey, this partnership, when we come together for, for our customers, it's one plus one equals three. But in this case, it's truly the, uh, um, the reality here. We'll talk about with the presence and the reach of Equinix as an underlay that uh, um, Kevin just touched on, plus all of the, uh, the value-added layer we're going to talk about from uh, Prosimo perspective, whether it's a distributed user base, distributed set of applications, how do we enable communications, whether it's user to app or app to app, east west, with all the right set of policies, visibility, and compliance and control with the right level of performance. That's exactly what we are striving for here. That's our key goal. Any enterprise that jointly works with Equinix and uh, Prosimo should be able to get that. Uh, we'll get to the details of how now. So before we get to the, the joint offering, uh, for those uh, that are you know, hearing about Prosimo for the first time, welcome, and we'll just touch on uh, what key problems that we solve and uh, maybe a quick overview of our solution itself. Uh, the first problem is kind of what happens within the cloud. You know, Kevin mentioned in the cloud doesn't mean it's just one location. It could be n number of regions within a single cloud provider, or it could be n number of regions across different cloud providers, plus your own data centers as, as an enterprise, right? When the communication happens, whether it's VPC to VPC, uh, uh, application endpoint to application endpoint, or some of the past services like you know, Amazon S3, RDS database, you know, um, or Redshift, and then uh, Azure past services or Google, you really have to have a fabric that can understand the uh, different layers of communication. How do I ensure that this web application that's sitting in my Amazon VPC can go talk to a Google BigQuery, which is a past service, at the same time, for all of my compliance control, my database is sitting here in my data center and all the communication pattern needs to happen. And given that line of business has full freedom these days to go develop applications wherever they want, right? That is what we call as in the cloud networking or app to app communication. And when those applications are distributed, we still have to provide uh, access to the users. Users may mean your end customers, users may mean your own employees or business partners like Kevin touched upon, and they may come from anywhere. It could be from your own offices, partner offices, branches. Um, that's where the SD-WAN integration angle comes really, really handy. Uh, I'll touch on uh, that use case as well. Or just distributed users just roaming around with their laptops or uh, mobile devices, right? Um, they could work from airports and so on. Uh, how do we still provide 
um, the right level of performance with all the security controls with with uh, the Equinix presence as well, right? Now, 665 metros is what Kevin mentioned. From any of these metros, with the joint offering now, you'll be able to ingress that fabric where the first set of security control happens right where the users are located, plus all of the performance lane um, gets activated on, okay, this is a critical application. I have to route the traffic to this cloud region using this pattern. So all those are part of the solution as well. This is what we call broadly as to the cloud networking, like users trying to talk to cloud. Put this together in the cloud and to the cloud is what we really call as um, a cloud networking uh, problem set, right? So um, here, broadly, the common use cases when customers work with Prosimo, again, uh, we'll touch on each of these use cases in a couple of minutes, but broadly, I just want to lay out, uh, this is how we think of the problem use cases, right? One is the network up motion. This is where we work with the networking team of the enterprise. They, they you know, start with the case of, I have four regions in AWS, four regions in Azure, I have three or four data centers, and my branches are located in all these geographical locations. How do I build a fabric? And that's where we start to talk about Okay, um, here is how uh, you can discover all these locations and regions from the cloud, and uh, you'll be able to kind of using our control plane, build this fabric, whether it's for layer three connectivity or going up as well. Going up is, is, is a, a good handoff into the service networking use case. This is where it's just not about building that highways, right? It's not about, hey, I can make any IP talk to any IP. That's a starting point, but quickly the problem kind of elevates itself into, I have these specific applications. You know, I really want to make sure that I have the right set of policy and compliance where this app is trying to talk to this database only that is allowed. By mistake, I don't want it to go talk to a staging cluster or go to a developer cluster and so on. Because in the cloud, it's so easy to spin up a VPC. Within a couple of minutes, you have a VPC with a bunch of virtual machines. How do I ensure you can actually make sure that only the right application service can talk to the right application service? So that's broadly we call as a service networking. And lastly, um, the industry calls it a zero trust network access, where you can provide a global private access to all of your cloud application. Um, that's the, the third use case. So the starting point could be anywhere. It doesn't have to be, oh, I have to start always with the network of motion. We have customers that start with the global private access um, and then kind of move into building this any to any uh, cloud region to cloud region communication and then move up to service networking. On any order, they can start and move towards the other use cases as well. Very quickly on the uh, the layers uh, of value. So this is where our partnership with the cloud providers and uh, Equinix come in the mix as well, because for us, they are an underlay. So we will be able to go deploy our software stack, whether it's an AWS region, Azure region, GCP data center, or with Equinix Network Edge, it could be an Equinix Network Edge location. So our software stack, once it's deployed, um, it, it will form this layer three mesh, first of all, as a starting point. Okay, that way you can segment your network, you can create those uh, namespaces saying that this is my production network lane, this is my staging, this is however you want to divide your layer three network. And you can add use cases such as, uh, I want a firewall to be inserted here. And I want to ensure that even if they're overlapping, I'm able to make a VPC one uh, talk to a VPC two or VPC one try to talk to uh, a data center IP address, which might be overlapping. So those are all common layer three problems. Once you go uh, solve that one, then we get into the application native networking or service networking. And the overall goal here is to ensure that users can freely talk to any of the applications or apps can talk to each other as well. So this is how we kind of build the value layer by layer. More importantly, for all of the um, integrations that we have, we try to leverage the, the cloud native services. We don't try to kind of rip and replace the existing services. For example, if it's AWS, right? Our goal is not to go build an equivalent stock of a, a, a transit gateway. Transit gateway works great. It's cloud native, it's elastic. We go leverage that and orchestrate that. Same thing here, Equinix Network Edge, and then we are kind of working with Equinix team on broader other uh, up, up and coming services, just Fabric Cloud Order that you'll hear about soon as well. So for us, when we work with partners, we try to make sure that customers are able to easily consume those services first, and then they're able to use our fabric on top for any to any communication. Okay, so how do they deploy? Uh, we have a Prosimo control plane. Uh, you'll see that in action when we talk about the joint solution as well, even for Equinix, uh, where uh, it is a multi-tenanted SaaS solution. You're not kind of managing appliances for control plane and management plane and so on. So it's all uh, fully delivered as SaaS. That's our uh, controller management plane. We call that a Prosimo dashboard. And then there is a data plane element that gets deployed in a cloud native form factor, whether it's let's say AWS, we use 
uh, EKS and go deploy uh, on a per region basis. Here is our data plane. That way you are able to build this fully mesh fabric. Same thing for Azure, GCP, and data center and so on. And then for uh, Equinix perspective, um, here is where our connector comes in. Now that we talked about the 65 locations, that becomes a central anchor point for getting all of your cloud connectivity. Oh, I want to direct connect to this AWS region. I want uh, uh, Google Interconnect or an Azure Express route, doesn't matter. So when Equinix becomes the focal point, and we're able to drop our connector, I'll talk about all those uh, in a minute, where you're able to drop that connector in Equinix Network Edge, and that way, for all of the user to cloud traffic or branch to cloud traffic, you're able to leverage Equinix in a seamless fashion. And even for inter-region or inter-cloud traffic, we provide that flexibility. It could be uh, a cloud backbone between AWS US East and AWS US West, as an example. Or you could write a policy and say that, hey, I want to ensure that I'm leveraging my own private WAN. In this case, uh, this is where the Equinix partnership comes in. You may have a direct connect uh, connection going into the closest Equinix POP and Network Edge POP, and then you could have an express truck going in. You'll be able to leverage that private circuit because the data shows that the cloud data egress, whether it's for inter-region or for inter-cloud, is one of the key line item in their uh, cloud budget, right? Uh, last time we did a survey and worked with some of the analysts, 17, 18% of your cloud bill, which could be you know overall millions of dollars, just goes for your cloud egress charges, right? So as an enterprise, you want to have the freedom and the policy control on how your traffic gets routed. And you can write a simple policy in our control plane that says that when my production traffic goes on between two regions of the same cloud or two different cloud providers, I want to ensure that it goes through the Equinix Network Edge POP. That's a simple policy you could write, and you'll be able to leverage similar things for your user to cloud traffic as well. Okay, that's in a nutshell an intro to um, Prosimo and where Equinix comes in. Before uh, I get into some of the details, Nathan, any questions, anything you want to provide here? Yeah, thank you both for that um, overview of just the popular use cases and implementations of, of um, uh, various companies' uh, solutions. I did have a couple of questions before we jump in, but there was something I, I just that jumped out at me and I wanted to clarify. Um, so I think I heard from both of you, uh, Kevin, you were saying before that um, one of the things that you help uh, companies get away from is this need for this traditional model of direct connect to each individual cloud and hairpinning everything back through a central kind of uh, control location in, a, in an on-prem, for example, whereas you can actually just connect, directly connect workload to workload. Is that is that like one of, one of the more common kind of things you enable organizations to do? Yeah, I, I think one of the common things we we do is a couple of things. One is that multi-cloud networking where literally you've got, um, you know, workloads in, say, Azure and other workloads in AWS or data in one place, workloads in another, and being able to be, uh, be able to network those together, right? Uh, right. Course, yeah. You know, and, and it's by using, and, and the reason to come to, to Equinix is, is to, to leverage those cloud providers own constructs, right? Like Express Route and AWS Direct Connect and Google Cloud Interconnect, because those are higher performance, low latency. Like most companies can't call up, you know, Google and say, hey, could you dig a fiber to my front door? Right. Instead, like we poured concrete, poured, you know, created our own data centers oftentimes sitting right next door to some of those cloud providers. And, and they have dug those, those trenches and laid the fiber and they're coming directly to Equinix. And so uh, it's a great place to be able to take advantage of the this high performance, low latency uh, connections right there uh, at Equinix. And again, traditionally you'd rent a cabinet and cage and throw your own gear in a cabinet and cage and manage that all yourself. But now this is a much easier way to, to, do, to do that. That's fascinating. And I'm sure many guess why I just asked that one. Your answer, I mean, you use the exact words that we use, um, like managing and orchestrating native constructs of the cloud provider instead of trying to bring traditional models that might have worked on-prem between two private data centers that just really aren't supportive of cloud workloads where we need to bring connectivity to the workloads, which might be between two clouds and a bit on-prem and a bit somewhere else and bringing the right connectivity model to those workloads, it's the same thing that we're solving. A lot of people who are bringing networking uh, networks as overlays onto cloud providers are also doing the same thing, bringing these hairpinning models that are just not 
not supportive of the cloud native architecture and cloud native development patterns uh, and cloud native applications. They're they're the old way that's kind of well, convenient to drop in because that's what I know, but really it's not supporting the vision and the mission of cloud and the agility of cloud. So I just that jumped out at me. It's, it's the same messaging we we both kind of use here, which which I guess is the strength behind this partnership. Um, why it's just it makes sense that we're working together. We're solving those same things by eliminating some of those legacy ideas and connectivity yeah. models, right? For sure. And I think we're just operating at different levels of the OSI stack, right? We're kind of in our yeah. humble, uh, you know, underlay and we're happy to do that because it's important work and, and you're adding value on top of that. Magnificent. And um, so a couple of questions, just in, in case anyone's wondering that's uh, listening here, like, who's this for? Do, do I have to be a fortune tender kind of ring on this thing? I mean, you're solving massive problems. Um, like, like what kind of person's interested in this and can, can use this and leverage this? Is there a type of organization? Like who's it for? I can take that, uh, Kim, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Sure. Uh, you don't have to be a fortune tender to take advantage of this. As long as your enterprise has a strategy to move to cloud, it could be multiple clouds. It could be single cloud, but many regions. And in many cases, you're going to be hybrid as well. As long as you have a cloud forward strategy and you are looking for ways to interconnect those cloud regions, not just this connectivity far, but you want a better um, application oriented model of how do I ensure compliance? How do I ensure segmentation? How do I ensure I have the right level of visibility and policy control for how my data gets forwarded between region X and region Y or cloud provider A and cloud provider B. So if you have any of these use cases, you are a candidate uh, to take advantage of this partnership. So, I mean, it's anyone who's just got workloads that needs to leverage multiple locations. It's, I mean, I, I've, I've seen companies that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue that are a team of a handful of people because that's the age we kind of live in now, right? It's the size of the workload and, and the communication that, that dictates the need, not just uh, the, the size of the company <laughs> and as employees. Um, another quick question. So this this happened a lot, I think, in the the early attempts of multi cloud, where people would just throw caution to the wind and say, "Ah, just route it over the internet." Um, <laughs> this this is uh, t tell me why that's different. <laughs> no, that's a great segue uh, into our first use case, Nathan. If I may use a picture to explain, let's that, jump into the why that is, that is not the right answer. Let's take this case. Right, this is a use case one, and for many of our uh, enterprise customers. Um, they start with, hey, I, I have this distributed user base. Kevin touched on this as an introduction to network edge as well, right? I have partners, I have remote workers, I have campus and branches that are distributed around the world. Um, and then I have this workloads that are distributed as well. And then uh, it could be, let's say, a couple of regions of Azure, just an example. I have AWS, it could be GCP as well, and then data center. When you have this distributed reality that you have to deal with, and if you just rely on internet to route traffic either between them or to them, you're actually leaving many, many things to chances, right? Hey, what is the level of performance? What's the level of security? What's the level of predictability here? I mean, internet is a good choice to build a basic VPN connection when you're testing out, hey, is my basic IPsec VPN coming in? But you lose 100% of control. And not just that, when you use internet egress to go talk between, let's say in this case, AWS EU Central as a region and uh, East uh, uh, of Azure in this case, right? That's a natural pattern. If you don't do anything as an enterprise, if you have these two regions, and you have VPCs here trying to talk to VNets here, it is going to go through your IGW here and ingress on an internet point with Azure. Your cloud bill, if you take a look back at the end of the month, it's going to skyrocket, right? Because you don't realize what the number of VPCs are getting uh, you know, um, added up so quickly and uh, you lose control of that. So it's just not the level of performance and security controls. It has a huge bearing on your cloud uh, monthly cost as well. So that brings up to this cloud, global cloud ingress use case. So let's start with Equinix first. In this case, assume these are the Equinix network edge location, and I'm gonna start with the connectors. So the way you can enable this use case is wherever you have uh, distributed uh, offices, right? Whether it's branch office, campuses, very, very close to that, you can pick an Equinix a network edge pop, and then they have excellent marketplace. You can pick and choose your favorite SD-WAN vendor and say that hey, that is where I'm bringing all of my SD-WAN traffic to bed. And that is the pop I'm actually bringing my direct connect to AWS. That is the pop I'm bringing my express route to Azure. Uh, that, that's, that's, that may be where you have your uh, uh, favorite telco terminating the WAN connection uh, from your data center as well. So that kind of becomes a meet me point where your users are coming in. That becomes a kind of entry point into cloud. And you don't have to do that for every cloud region. Your cloud region might be you know, several regions of Azure, several regions of AWS. But you simply have to do that 
at a point where um, you have an aggregation point with Equinix Network Edge. So once you have that, then you go to Prosimo control plane, go deploy the Prosimo edges in the respective cloud region. So this automatic mesh gets formed between the edges themselves and the connectors will automatically form a, a connection interconnection with all of the Prosimo edges. Now you have a fully meshed fabric between all of the Equinix network edge locations and all of the cloud regions in a few minutes time and including your data center as well. When you have this fully mesh fabric, especially for user ingress, and that's where your S3 WAN traffic can come in. And let's say I have this 10 locations uh, in my, let's say Bay Area okay, region, right? And then all of them could go to, let's say San Jose as a part. And then I have this 10 branches in somewhere in, let's say East Coast, closer to Northern Virginia. And then you can put a pop there and then essentially uh, bring the traffic to that point. So between Prosimo connector, which is your multi-cloud entry point and the SD-WAN head end that is sitting there in the Equinix network edge, and, and you could do a simple BGP handoff and say that, hey, that's, that is how I want to do a BGP handoff. Or the last mile for a remote user could be just internet because all these metros from Equinix perspective are just a few milliseconds away from any of the uh, internet connection. It could be business internet or your home internet and so on. You are able to hop onto the Equinix pop within, let's say, five to 10 milliseconds and then across the board. And once you jump in, even via internet for a remote user perspective or from an SD WAN location, now you get handed off to that Prosimo multi cloud fabric that I talked about. From that perspective, we're able to actually minimize the ISP last month. We're able to optimize the paths to figure out that, hey, from Northern Virginia, how do I get to my application in EU Central? AWS, or how do I get to, let's say, uh, my Sydney region of GCP? So you don't have to set up any of these things. The multi-cloud fabric that you've built will automatically route the traffic, optimize the performance, depending on the layer of application. Is it a TCP application? Is it a HTTP application? You're able to optimize that. Not only that, you're able to turn on the security gates. We call them the five gates of security. And you essentially are building your own zero trust network fabric here authentication, authorization, and you can have access policy on, depending on your SAML profiles and so on, are you even allowed to talk to the application? If not, you get dropped at the closest Equinix pop there itself, and you don't necessarily have to carry the traffic across the board to the cloud region and drop the traffic. And the Prosimo fabric brings in layer seven firewall, and then you have this ML-based authentication authorization on. Is there a certain pattern that is changing, right? Uh, what used to be like maybe 10 MB of interactions now you're downloading gigs and gigs of files. You know That's a pattern change. The Prosimo Fabric can automatically take advantage of all of that. Step of authentication, you name it, whatever is defined as standards for zero trust. And you're able to build this within your own fabric by taking advantage of the Equinix Network Edge location and the Prosimo software cluster that is there. So that's what we call as a global cloud ingress. Nathan, to your point, um, why internet cannot be an answer for any of this. With just internet, you do not get any of this control. Um, and with, with uh, Equinix and Prosimo, you get all of the control I just talked about. No, love it. Thank you. And a quick question that came up actually from our uh, from our live audience. Um, the, the configuration flow for uh, those connectors into Equinix, are they, I mean, are they spun up from within Equinix itself is that a you know I have to get information out of Equinix and then configure that into the connector. Like what what's the handoff like in getting this up and kind of running from that perspective, the connector side? No, oh, great question. And that's where we actually spend a lot of time with the Equinix engineering team and our engineering team work together to make that experience seamless. So if you are a Network Edge customer, I'll let Kevin jump in as well in a second. You can go to Network Edge and Prosimo is going to show up just like any other uh, um, the, the virtualized network windows that are there. Right? Oh, for example, if I'm using say a Cisco SD-WAN, I'm just picking up an example, which is a popular SD-WAN use case. And then that you can just go and spin up a head end right there. Oh, by the way, I want the traffic to be inspected by a Palo Alto firewall. You can just go click Palo Alto firewall shows up. Now this traffic has to go join the multi-cloud fabric. And then you go click the connector um, image that's gonna show up in Network Edge. And then from that point on, for authentication authorization to ensure that this is indeed the right one, our Prosimo control plane, has the authentication mechanism to figure out this is the right keys. It's showing up. It's not a random image that's showing up the fabric. We have built in all of that. So the bring up itself is so seamless. You can do that from a network edge perspective. From that point on, you can hop over to Prosimo dashboard and build all the security policies, path policy, segmentation, all things that I talked about. You're able to control that from a single point of view. So the bring up is seamless. The handoff to the rest of the uh, ecosystem, whether it's firewall or SD-WAN is seamless. And all of the multi-cloud control happens via uh, Prosimo dashboard. And Kevin, if you want to add yeah, anything that's... on the experience for Network Edge, please feel free. Yeah, I think that's 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 spot on, right? So you know, when you when you go to deploy the Prosimo 
connector within Network Edge, you're essentially providing information for the for the uh, your controller to discover it and then take over from there. So you know we're fairly hands off. Uh, you know once once uh, <laughs> once it's up and running and uh, you know, you've discovered it, then you, you know, Prosmo is uh, configuring it, and so it's it made made to be very seamless from that perspective. That's that's a magnificent uh, answer. I love it. So this this uh, this partnership, this alliance, this integration is not just a blog and a webinar. You, <laughs> there's some work that's been done to make this very easy to go and uh, get connected and integrated, and directly from from the Equinix uh, Edge as well, which is great to hear. Cool. Excellent. We have just, other just use cases. One follow-up. Right? Unless uh, there's some more to add here. Yeah, I want to actually go back to the internet question because um, this is yep. a very, very popular use case with our joint customers as well. Um, of course, it's not like um, internet is not relevant at all, right? In many cases, uh, internet quality is improving as well. But when enterprise wants that control back, and we, we have this concept called lane. Hey, you pick your own lane because you understand your application better. For example, now there are uh, three lanes here, right? Cost saving from anywhere remote user, they're just accessing some non-critical application. It's totally fine. Uh, just, just come over internet and, and uh, go talk to the application and sitting in a cloud region, right? And the last, let's see, this could be a cloud backbone. And then you can actually choose a performance lane saying that it's balanced of sorts, right? I don't really care. Uh, it's not that critical, but whichever way it goes in, you can go to the closest Prosimo ingress point itself, which is which could be another cloud region. For example, if, if I'm coming from Europe, I'll go to a Frankfurt AWS region and then take the cloud backbone and then come talk to an application sitting in Northern Virginia, right? That's, I mean, you get, uh, uh, I would say, uh, the best effort performance there, but it's not like you have a full control there. Then for my supercritical applications, and you can write a policy saying that, no, I want everything to happen as close to users as possible. You can pick and choose a fast lane. It's all abstracted away. You're not sitting and configuring BGP policies and then path selection policies one by one. Rather, just create this buckets of application and then park them to a particular lane and off you go. Everything in terms of what type of optimization takes place. Is it TCP optimization? Is it HTTP optimization, caching, and so on? All that is automatically taken care of, and you are able to spend as little time as possible on the internet here. Like I mentioned, five to 10 milliseconds on average. Enter an Equinix network edge pop, and from that point on, you're part of the fabric. Everything happens close to the user. So you can still leverage internet, um, but you, you give the control back to the enterprise. Got it. Thank you. Okay, switching gear, um, I know you brought up a use case of what about uh, the, the cloud to cloud traffic. Now we, we talked about the north south pattern. The enterprise network engineers keep referring this to us. The north south means my users are talking to the application. That's one pattern. But there's a huge emerging pattern about east west because of the distributed nature of applications, right? And does uh, this partnership have any relevance to it? The answer is absolutely yes. Uh, it is a very similar workflow. I'm going to kind of start from the left to right, right? So you have all of the Azure locations. This is actually a, a, a cleaned up version of a customer topology that uh, uh, both Equinix and uh, us, us work with them. In this case, uh, all of the um, locations on the left are Azure. All of the locations on, on the right are AWS. You have applications sitting in many regions of each of the cloud provider. And then you have the Equinix fabric in the middle, right? Um, all you have to do with this, these, these locations become a meet-me point, not just for users to come in and meet the cloud applications, rather this becomes a meet-me point for even cloud providers themselves or even the cloud region themselves. So you go to a, a network edge marketplace, spin up a Prosimo connector, and then um, essentially you have an underlay set up to where express route to all the Azure locations from depending on what you have set up from that network edge and same thing for AWS. Now, it is not just the internet that is acting as a connectivity point between the cloud or not just the cloud backbone, you have a choice to pick between. I have my own sort of a private van now, right? Using Express Route, Equinix, Fabric, and Direct Connect on this side. It's end-to-end -end private. And I have a cloud backbone to pick between different cloud regions. And I have the internet. That's kind of the last resort here. Can I write a simple policy? First of all, can I build a fabric mesh between all of these so I can ensure that my VNet can talk to a VPC here. Uh, a subnet can talk to a subnet with the right segmentation, with the right firewall rules, and solve for overlapping IP addresses and so on. At the same time, can I ensure that the applications can talk to each other? So you write all of those things. In addition to that, you can simply write a path selection policy and say, hey, which path do I want to take? And this is a failover path and so on. So that's how uh, we ensure that uh, even for east-west traffic, you are able to 
build this mesh in a seamless fashion and get the control back on how you want your traffic to be routed. And you can pick and choose between regions. If for this region, I would rather prefer private or for this region, I'm okay. I'm just testing out a few things. Just take the internet uh, peering between AWS and Azure. That's totally fine. You can do that uh, on a region by region basis as well. Any questions on the, the MCN core use case, uh, Nathan? If not, I'll continue to show uh, a couple of uh, use cases here, right? What is the value here? Why can't I just do this myself? When a question comes up, some, some customers on, okay, why do I have to go through this partnership? Can I just spin this up myself, right? Mm -hmm. The first part is the, the orchestration and the visibility, right? So each cloud is unique in the, from a uh, no, uh, connectivity perspective. Take AWS, for example, Transit Gateway, you have Cloud Van, you have VPC peering, you have all the the, the NACL rules you have to set up, um, the route management, it's just not a one-time setup. The ongoing route management when VPCs show up and VPCs get spun down, and then you have the pass applications coming in. And then of course you want to expose certain applications using private link. The private link is a construct where you're just exposing an endpoint. You're not exposing in the entire VPC here, especially for some of the business to business use cases um, that becomes handy. If you really do not want to build a team of experts to go figure out all of the things in AWS, all of the things in Azure, and figure out how do I interconnect all of them using Equinix, the orchestration itself becomes a problem, right? Um, sometimes you can terraform your way out just for the day zero connectivity, but then you realize that the ongoing management and the changes takes a lot of your cycle. So how do you uh, use a common control plane, a, a common management layer, a common dashboard to set up all of these? That's value number one. And our partnership with Network Edge, now it's, it's seamless bring up of connectors. That is That comes really handy as well. Secondly, connectivity is just the starting point, like I mentioned earlier, right? It, it is about the application layer policies that you want to do this. You can write a simple policy, like in this case, saying that even after I leverage Equinix as an underlay, I build this fabric, uh, I want to go to Prosimo policy engine and write policies like, hey, this app can talk to the SQL DB, but if it comes from the other app, let's say uh, for other compliance reason, you know, PCI, HIPAA, you name it, I want to make sure that uh, this application can never be exposed to the other database, right? Now, in this case, you're not talking the, the language of IP. You're not writing 10.1 cannot talk to 10.2. Of course, you could do that. That's a five tuple rules, but in cloud with frequently changing IP addresses, like Kubernetes clusters coming up and going down all the time, do you really want to go talk that language or do you want to leverage the Prosimo engine, which can understand, act as an application proxy and figure out hey, what is the URL, what type of action are you taking for the application? And you can actually create policies in a seamless fashion across cloud as well. So this becomes, to Kevin's point earlier, hey, Equinix provides his underlay and Prosimo brings that overlay, which not only talks layer three, but also talks layer seven. This is the key reason why uh, this is uh, partnership makes total sense here. You on it, application layer, nice. Nice, nice. Okay, then uh, lastly, visibility itself. Uh, um, once you build this, you have all these traffic patterns going on um, You know, across cloud using Equinix. You really want to figure out hop by hop, hey, what's going on, can I understand if there is a problem, um, this rocket ship is popular these days. Uh, uh, once we started showing this to customers, okay, either it's user talking to an application or application talking to an application. Can I figure out hop by hop? What is the first stop latency? This could be the latency from your starting point to the closest Equinix location. Or this could be to uh, the ingress cloud region. And between two cloud regions, what is the latency? And you can actually compare and contrast. When you go over uh, uh, no, the, the vanilla internet, versus going over an Equinix fabric, right? Now you, you will be able to realize that, hey, this is so much better going through the Equinix network edge pops and going through my own private connection versus leaving it for the internet exchange points to figure out how do I route the traffic. You were able to compare and contrast that and understand the value. Lastly, what did it mean for the application? Did my overall response time improve? Um, are my end users happy because now I'm going through this uh, joint solution versus uh, just, just going over the regular model, right? you're able to actually uh, get the right level of visibility using Prosimo dashboard to understand all of these as well. Okay, cool. so Kevin, Thank this you. is a good point. Uh, I want to kind of bring in Kevin here, Nathan, for a second, because Equinix actually plays a critical role in uh, business partners working together because, you know, different enterprises, sometimes we work with enterprise, they work with actually thousand other retailers, right? Uh, um, and then same thing with the bank. They talked about banking relationship with, 
hundreds, if not thousands of these banking partners. So what's the uh, key value prop from Equinix perspective for P2P exchange, Kevin? Then I'll jump on from Prosima Value. Yeah, again, um, you know, in fact, with Network Edge, we're, we're working with a, a, a financial that wants to create private interconnection uh, back to their, they, they offer a SaaS service, right? But it's a very private business to business SaaS service, and they want their customers to connect in through um, using a network device on Network Edge and also through our private interconnection over the fabric. And so they're able to do that by becoming a destination on our fabric. It, and, and, you know, it's very easy for them to onboard additional uh, additional customers in this way. So that's just one example of like in the financial industry where you know, they enjoy um, you know, private interconnection, but it also extends even again to like Zoom here, right? So uh, of course, lots of people use just plain old internet, but um, you know, to assure a, a really solid experience, a lot of organizations, uh, you know, on ramp their uh, customers through their through um, through an aggregation device in one of our metropolitan locations, and then it and then connects to the, to the closest Zoom, um, you know, point of presence. Same with security services, um, you know, like uh, Umbrella or Imperva. Uh, or um, Cloudflare, you know, uh, one, once you're on uh, the network, we're able to get you to that that service uh, in in the fastest um, way that's both private um, and provides high performance low latency. This is a great call out, uh, um, Kevin. So you mentioned about all the partners. Now going into, if you're an enterprise and you want to kind of expose your own application to B2B partners, right? And you can create a simple workflow the way one of our joint customers did that is they had um, their own um, application, right? And they don't want to kind of expose the complete application to all of their business partners um, because there's a lot of compliance things. They just want to create a private link in this perspective. At the same time, you don't have to worry about, hey, what if one of my partner application that's coming from another VPC, either from the same region or another region, when they have to go uh, talk to my application, what if they're all overlapping IP addresses? When on top of what Kevin mentioned, the, the vast presence, the vast pairing model they have with a ton of PaaS and SaaS services. In addition to that, now you don't have to worry about what if it's overlapping because once it's exposed via Prosimo, we abstract that out. For example, the application could be running in a CIDR block called 10.100 and your business partner sitting in US East of under the cloud um, trying to talk to your application. And you, you've given them the workflow that, hey, just, just meet me at one of the Equinix Network Edge and that will provide a layer three connectivity point. Once you join the fabric and you don't have to worry about what is the actual application side of block, we, we take care of that abstraction layer, right? either using private link, we have a concept called service core, which we did a separate webinar about, which is essentially when it moves to an FQDN layer, that's what matters. As long as the business partner knows that the FQDN for the application is, let's say, app1.enterprise.com, and we use that FQDN to uniquely identify the resource. We use DNS techniques to route the traffic. And the actual IP address of the endpoint, it is immaterial in our fabric, right? We're able to kind of abstract that out. That way you're not coordinating with a thousand different partners on, hey, by the way, if you have overlapping, turn on this NAT rule. And then if it's uh, natted to the same IP address, then you have kind of layers and layers of problem to worry about, right? So this is keeps it very clean. It gives you the presence because of the, the pairing model and the partnership that Equinix has for a ton of these PaaS and SaaS services. So if you have any type of business partner exchange use case, um, this, this joint solution makes total sense, yeah. Okay, so coming to the home stretch here for telco partners and MSPs. Before that, Nathan, anything you wanna quickly call on? Yeah, just on that last one, I'm a big fan of that one, but there's two that come up that, that we hear a lot i mean some companies is the merger and acquisition route I, i've served on merger and acquisition due diligence teams myself one of the things that's very closely looked at is how quick i can get my roi after the merge or acquisition event and if there are all sorts of gnarly network things like like most companies who use the default terraform module for creating vpc subnets i have overlapping ip problems everywhere and how am i going to do this so the speed at which those things can be overcome which is something we do brilliantly um interconnecting them that's great <laughs> and equinix is providing that one but then there's additional problems that run over the top of that which is what Prosimo solves that is quite trivial to solve but it's not just m a uh, again to our question earlier about uh, do i need to be one of these huge companies that has a strategy of buying other companies i mean even just sharing 
assets or resources to third parties? Do I want to expose my entire route configuration and have them be able to consume that so that we can interconnect? Obviously being able to do, uh, to work around solutions like that, where maybe I want to provide the interconnectivity, but I just want to expose one thing. And I just want to expose one kind of uh, endpoint to access that to that third party, but I want to do it over this private interconnectivity and not via the internet. Are they the two kind of, two good examples of sort of where this value brings? Yep, great point. Uh, um, thank you, Nathan. Okay, last one, telco partners, uh, MSPs, managed service providers, several of them, the largest one in the US and in the EMEA region and starting to with the, the Asia Pacific region recently as well. So they are actually uh, joint partners for Equinix and uh, uh, Prosimo. The, in what way, if you're wondering, what does it mean for a telco? So essentially, if you are uh, uh, from a telco MSP background, um, you will be able to use network edge pops to actually extend to any region you may not have presence in. For example, you might be uh, a telco MSP that just focused on the EMEA region and you have customers, global customers that want uh, uh, the user base to connect to the cloud regions from such as South America. This was a real use case that one of the uh, you know, MSP partners brought up and they were able to simply spin up. They call this super pop because that's where they're able to spin up all these services, right? Like uh, SD-WAN uh, vendors that I talked about, different set of firewalls. Now the uh, multi-cloud networking solutions like Prosimo, that becomes a super pop. Um, they can kind of white label this and sell it as a managed service, leveraging Equinix Network Edge and all the, the value-added layer of Prosimo built together. And they can actually make this any-to-any -any connectivity, leveraging the joint solution as well, right? So it just becomes a converged Cloud Connect Plus, um, they have the transport, especially telcos are known for their global backbone they've built. And if you're uh, trying to save costs in terms of, hey, I don't want to spend millions and millions of dollars just paying to my cloud egress cost. And this is one of the um, options to, to work with as well. So uh, there's you know, a lot of uh, joint value for telco customers too. With that, Kevin, anything you want to add on the, you, know, you were on a couple of calls jointly with the, the couple of uh, uh, you know, telco partners. So anything you want to add from a telco perspective? I think you've hit the nail on the head here, Manny, in, in terms of the, the joint value proposition here. Um, again, the ability to just very quickly and easily be able to uh, provide, provide interconnectivity for uh, their clients as the managed service provider and create that point of presence is, is just spot on. One quick question for you both then. Um, well, actually, it's probably for Manny, really. We, we as anyone who knows Prosimo uh, uh, recently heard, we have made that base connectivity, uh, interconnectivity um, free. We, we, we've given away that, that base kind of multi-cloud networking. Um, how does that uh, support this partnership, Manny? What, uh, what do we need to know? Excellent point, right? So this is where I want to kind of call uh, the MCN Foundation. That offering is called MCN Foundation. That's a great point as well. If you are on the webinar, you're trying, hey, how do I get going, right? I, I really like this. I really want to get going on this. So the, given the different layers of value, we feel that the overall orchestration, the bring up, um, the layer three routing and so on, it, that has to be part of a base layer, right? I mean, that is part of the MCN Foundation layer now. So you'll be able to go to Prosimo dashboard, quickly spin up, um, the, the edges and the connectors, and then the base layer three connectivity, basic ACL rules, that is part of the platform because it's running in your own cloud, your own AWS accounts, your own Equinix net, network edge account, you're able to spin this up. So that value layer from Prosimo is absolutely free. Like uh, Nathan mentioned, you can try that today. The moment you want to write some advanced rules, whether it's for app to app segmentation or namespaces for overlapping IP addresses, or you want to turn on some ZT policies, zero trust policies for user to app, or uh, firewall insertion, those kind of use cases, um, they are part of the paid package and you will be able to you know, kind of upgrade uh, to the paid packages very seamlessly. But to get going, if you want to say, I want a starting point to kind of kick the tires, absolutely. If you have these cloud accounts ready, uh, just, just go to uh, get MCN from a Prosima website and you'll be able to see this in action in your own cloud in a couple of minutes. Likewise, That's fantastic. Then, yeah, just real quickly, likewise on Network Edge, we do have uh, you know, 14 day free trial available. So uh, just, you know, log in, create a user account and, and away you go. So yeah, I think if you combine the two together, <laughs> you can start kicking the tires pretty quick. That's, That's awesome. a pretty good evaluation. Even if you're not for those a current who... network edge customer, use a free trial there and use the MCN foundation here. You can get going yeah. today. 
Now, the caveat here is that I guess, um, you know, we're going GA here uh, in October. We're actually seeing if we can accelerate that faster than, than October. We're in, we're in beta right now. So uh, in terms of the trial, uh, um, we would probably have to work with you to enable the, the trial on Network Edge for, for Prosimo. But once we get to GA, it'll just be there like any other, uh, uh, you know, device on, on our marketplace. But I just want to, uh, so, to avoid confusion there. Makes sense, Kim. Nathan, you were saying awesome. something. Awesome. Great to hear. So yeah, and for those for those who are already uh, uh, customers of Equinix and want to um, avoid going down that path of uh, overlay um, hub and spoke kind of architectures, and they want to just interconnect directly workloads to workloads, uh, the way a cloud native architecture wants, um, then yeah, just Prosmo is the way you can uh, you can go down that path. We are at time, um, perfectly time. Well done, guys. Uh, thank you very much, both of you. Really cool partnership. Loved the questions coming in. Loved hearing how that's an automated integration. And it's not, uh, as, as one person asked, do I have to swivel my chair from one management tool to another? No, no, it actually is a proper integration. And we automate the uh, implementation of those possible connectors in the uh, Equinix Edge. So super cool work. Really appreciate it. This will be available on demand for those who want to look at the evaluation of uh Prosimo, that, that free tier. If you're already using Equinix, you can go to prosimo.io forward slash get MCN, free sign up. Um, yeah, thanks everybody. Really appreciate it. Um, great, great webinar. And uh, any if unless there's any closing comments, we'll uh, end it there. Thanks, Manny. Thanks, Nathan. Appreciate it. I'm going to go to the pantry and get some peanut butter and chocolate. <laughs> really appreciate the partnership, Kevin. All right. Thank you. Great stuff. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.